Hi, this is Brother Tony, and this is Bridge Lecture 0 0.1. Basically, this is stuff you need to know how to do before we get into the actual bridge uh, analysis and design. So what we're looking at today is using the structural stress analyzer. What I want you to do is I want you to take good notes in your engineering uh, notebook. There's not going to be a lot of time in class to actually do what you need to do with the structural stress analyzer and prepare your sample. So you need to be well prepared coming into the class, getting right to work. So the objectives for this video, first of all, safety. Second of all, you need to be able to prepare the sample. And third, test the sample. Okay, so first of all, safety. Wear safety glasses. Um, with you, you're going to be using aluminum, and these aluminum shavings will be very hot and very sharp. So make sure you have safety glasses on. Don't brush off the metal shavings. Use a vacuum with the attachment or with the clamp that I'll show later. You basically take the clamp with your um, tube of aluminum in there. You go over a garbage can and then just shake it off into the garbage can. Once you've made your cuts and you've uh, drilled the holes, you want to smooth off the cuts and holes. You can use a grinder, but I've found that using a, um, a file is easier and quicker. And then finally, the aluminum transfers heat quickly, so when you have to cut your sample, um, don't be surprised if as you're cutting it, you'll see some of the heat transfer to where your fingers are. It's not enough to burn you, or I don't think it'll be enough to burn you in the time that you cut it, but just be aware and don't be surprised. So what you're going to do with the bridge uh, design and analysis is eventually you're going to analyze metal that you're going to be using to use, design, and build your bridge for. Even though you don't know how or what it's for right now, just go with it because you'll need to know how to use a structural stress analyzer. So first of all, you have to prepare the sample. And we're going to be using aluminum tubing, which is fairly, um, fairly thin, but at the same time, the tensile strength on that is incredibly strong. Here's what you're going to do. First of all, use the metal drill bits. Okay, what are the metal drill bits? They're the ones that have little claws or little edges at the end. So don't try and grab them because if they are spinning, they will cut your fingers to bits. They're also in the blue box. So first of all, cut a piece of aluminum too before, between four and a half inches and five inches. And what you'll see here that is my cut piece of aluminum tube. What you want to remember is the heat does transfer fairly quickly. With the file, you see that file there? Make a mark at your file at a half an inch at both ends. You can barely see the one here and here, but the one in the middle is fairly clear. That's all you need to do. And then at one end of the tube, right here, make a mark with a Sharpie in line with the other marks that you put with the file. Make three more holes so the holes are 90 degrees from each other. What that's going to do is it's going to allow you to make the drill holes um, exactly opposite of each other. Okay? Okay, once you've made your mark, you're going to drill a set of 3 16 inch holes at one end using the file mark. Drill through both sides of the tube. Now look right here. Here is the clamp. It's a blue clamp. It's a flat blue clamp. Okay? Make sure you see where the file mark is, and you see right there, there's the space to allow you, your drill bit, to go all the way through and not hit right here with that metal with the clamp. You don't want to do that. Okay. Number two, here, sometimes you'll get a piece of metal filing right there on the actual drill bit, and it won't allow you to drill anymore. What you do is you have to stop the drill bit and take that off. Also, when you um, are adjusting your metal tube, stop the drill bit, stop the drill bit, adjust your metal tube, and then go drill again. So, step six, drill a set of 3 16 inch holes at the other end using the file mark. Then rotate the tube 90 degrees and drill another set of holes 1 eighth, 1 eighth inch closer to the end. Okay, so one end we're going to be using as support to keep it stable. The other end is going to be attached a different way so we can stretch it out. That's why you have one set of drill holes at one end two sets of drill holes at the other end. You need to make sure you do this correctly or you're going to have to do it again. Number seven, change the bit to one quarter inch and drill a set of holes in the middle mark. Rotate the tube 90 degrees and drill another set of holes. So you're asking yourself, why the heck are we drilling holes in the middle? Isn't that going to make the tube weaker? Yes, it is. And aluminum and metal in general, aluminum steel, have the same tensile strength, and it's very large. 
what we need to do is actually take some of that metal away so we can have a tensile strength that's less than 1,000 pounds, which is what our structural stress analyzer goes up to. So you'll see right here, one end, just one set of holes, the other end, two sets of holes. The middle, one set of holes here, but there should be two sets of holes. I did not take the correct picture. Finally, dispose of the metal filings and smooth the ends and holes. How do you do that? Take everything in that tube in the, um, in the clamp and put that over a waste paper basket, unclamp the stuff, and then just shake out the clamp, and your, most of your metal filings will go in there. Also, use a vacuum cleaner with the attachment on there and uh, vacuum out the metal filings that might have fallen down. Okay, so now you have to test the sample. So you need to put the tube in the structural stress analyzer as shown. So right here, there's a piston, and there's another attachment here that screws into the piston. Then on top, what we have here is a bolt with a nut, and then the head of that bolt I actually rounded off, which will allow you to put the tube over that bolt. You may actually have to use the rubber mallet, and make sure, don't use a metal one, you could um, bend the uh, tubing. This aluminum is, I think, eight, eight one hundredths of an inch thick, so it will bend easily. High tensile strength, but it will bend easily. So use the rubber mallet, and what you'll see is the side of the tube that needs to go into the bottom is the one with just one set of holes. And make sure that this head you can see in the hole. Then what you'll do is you will clamp with the vice grips. You can actually crimp off that end. And so as the structural stress analyzer's piston pulls down, the crimp doesn't allow the tube to go past the top of the bolt. Okay. Now you see this black piece? What you need to do, what you do now is you feed that tube through the hole there in that black piece. You see these two holes on top, the two sets of holes 90 degrees apart from one another, you put the solid metal bars through that. And so what happens now is the piston will go down, these bars will make it stop and it will stretch this out. And guess where it's going to break? It's going to break right where the two holes would be in the center. Okay, to use the structural stress analyzer, you have to turn it on. The uh, on and off switch is in the back left hand side of the analyzer. Set the SSA to incremental mode with 20 pound increments. Okay, here's how you do that. You see the mode button on the left side, you click the mode on select, so you toggle it to the left to go through the different modes. You will say, it will say continuous and incremental. When you see incremental, push set, and then it will say, probably say 10 pounds. You have to do the selection to get to 20, and then do set again. Now, once you are ready, make sure that the uh, front cover is closed. If it's not, you'll see safety cover not in place. Or if you open it, you'll see safety cover not in place. And it, nothing will happen until you put that safety cover back. So number four, press the start button each time to increase the weight by 20 pounds. A word to the wise. If you press the start button too long, it senses that as a reset and will go back to its set position, the first position. So basically push it quickly to do the increments. Now the first time you push it, since everything's getting settled, meaning like the tube is sticking out of the top a bit, everything will get settled down and it'll probably go up to, you know, the first 20 pounds. It's probably going to take 10, 15 seconds to get everything set. After that, it'll take almost a half a second to increment up by 20 pounds. Now, keep an eye on the 20 pounds. Keep an eye on how much force, how much poundage is being used because once the thing breaks, the reading goes back to zero. So make sure that you keep an eye on how much force is being used, how much weight, I should say. And then once the sample breaks, cut it free and put the pieces in the aluminum recycling bucket. Now you see right here, that hole, that's there because you're going to have to use the wire cutters and actually cut into this aluminum and then roll it up in order to get that nut and bolt out of there. The recycling bucket is a purple bucket. Uh, Brother Eric um, takes the aluminum and he recycles it. So make sure that stuff goes back in. 
and then put everything away so somebody else can use it. Now if you watch this, I'm sure that you took good notes and you're going to be ready to go when it's your turn to do this. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow or see you whenever I see you.